LEGO has released many versions of the Hogwarts Express over the years, and this has got to be the best version released thus far. I fell in love with this set the moment it was revealed back in May 2023, and I knew this was a must-have set to add to my LEGO train collection. I'm not even a Harry Potter fan at all, but this train still appeals to me since it's just so well designed. What really drew me to this set was the amount of variety that comes in the box, along with those nice-ass proportions and details of the locomotive and tender, and the inclusion of two passenger cars. Plus, you get a station and some train track as well. What a lovely piece of kit this is. When it comes to LEGO Hogwarts Express trains, LEGO has released four other versions in this scale prior to this new 2023 version. The first one came out in 2001, and it was cool for its time, but it used non-standard train wheels that weren't compatible with LEGO train track. The next version that came out in 2004 was essentially a re-release of the 2001 version, but with the normal train wheels and a few slight improvements. It was even sold as two separate versions, one with electronics to motorize it, and a one without that was cheaper. That set was pretty dope for 2004. Then, a new version was made in 2010 that utilized some new curved elements that made the train look even smoother than before. Well, I guess it was just slightly smoother. This set came with Ed Sheeran's blue magical car that could fly, which was a nice inclusion. It also came with a bunch of owls, and owls are cool. We wouldn't get another Harry Potter Express for like eight more years in 2018 when the last version was released. This train was pretty sick, it looked pretty damn good and used a whole bunch of modernized pieces. It came with a train platform slash station that was ite, but it was basically just a big empty structure with some stairs. Cool, but really not that cool though. I almost considered getting it, but I didn't like how it only came with just one passenger car. A train isn't really a train with just one car. I get that it would have been expensive to include a second car, but I feel like the big-ass train platform wasn't the best use of pieces for this set, and that the budget could have been used to make another passenger coach. That's why when I saw the new 2023 version of the Harry Potter Express, I was really excited to get it because it fulfilled my desires for a Lego train set. It was a train that looked hella detailed, had two passenger cars, plus you get the station, some track, and even some trackside accessories to really bring it to life. This set retails for 130 quid USD or $169 Canadian. I bought mine from Indigo, and I had these Indigo gift cards that I bought over a year ago for 20% off. I have been saving these gift cards for something good to buy, and I deem this set worthy of the gift cards. I also had a $20 off voucher in my Indigo Plum Points account, so I saved a bit of pocket money using that there voucher. I must say, this deal was somewhat lit, especially for a set that just got released. The box of the set wasn't too big, but it packs tons of stuff inside. I was impressed that the instructions and sticker sheet were carefully packed inside a cardboard sleeve to protect them. Nice touch, Lego. I like that. The build starts with the locomotive. I absolutely love how this looks. It looks even better in person than in the pictures. The shaping, clever use of pieces, and the details are fine as hell. The stickers on this locomotive also really bring out the detail and look exquisite. It's also really cool that this set uses the tiny train wheels for the pilot wheels, which hasn't been done before in a Lego train. I also like how the side rods look. Although they aren't functional, they look pretty good and have just the right shape. The train buffer bumper things at the front look really nice as well. This set doesn't use any of the regular magnet train buffer pieces, which is good because those pieces are really quite expensive. They can cost up to $5 each, so this set could have been 40 bucks more expensive if the train included like eight of those buffer pieces. Instead, this train is coupled with Lego Technic pieces, and that's totally fine here. They work well, look decent, and save an ass ton of money. Another thing to note is that the front buffer piece can actually be removed and then flipped upside down to switch from a fixed mode to a swivel mode. When you're just playing with the train with your hands, you want the front pilot wheels to be fixed in place so they aren't constantly flip-flopping all over the place. It makes it easy to roll the train onto the provided track in this set. But if you want to place this train on curved train track, you need to flip the buffer into swivel mode so the train can actually make those turns on the track. Although it looks like the train wheels can kind of swivel side to side when it's in its fixed position. It doesn't turn enough to actually make it on the curves of the curved track, unfortunately. But goddamn, it would have been genius if this actually could have worked both ways. I also really like how this locomotive has those large train wheels. It would be cool if the wheels weren't attached with those tan-colored Technic pins, since it stands out a bit, but that's a minor nitpick. 
You could probably swap out those pins for a black 6L Technic axle. I will probably try that myself and see how it goes. I like the pearl gold details on the train as well. The inside of the cab is decent, but it would have been next level if the controls used some printed tiles or something. It doesn't really matter that much since you don't really get to see the inside of the cab that much anyways. All right, now let's move on to the tender. This ain't no chicken tender. This part of the train is also known as the coal car. For a tender this small, it packs a bunch of great details and really good shaping. This is actually the best coal car I've ever seen in a Lego train set. I love those curves, the grab bars on each end, the stickers. It also has a brick built buffer on the end. And there are some cool details like a shovel and a water hatch on top. This thing is simple yet effective. It gets a 10 out of 10. Okay, now let's do the passenger cars. These cars are small, but since they're short, they kind of have the illusion that they're longer than they appear. The use of small windows also helps make them look longer than how they appear as well. They're both pretty similar, except one has a bit of extra wall pieces instead of windows towards the end. I love that detail on the end of each car with the red transparent lights. That really helps it look more real and less like just a box on wheels. There are also these gray vertical bar pieces on the car that represent some handrails that are placed under the windows on each end, which probably represent doors. You really gotta use your imagination to see this though, since these details are somewhat abstract. I appreciate any details on the exterior of the car that give it some texture. The ends of the car also have a black panel piece that represents doors. It would have been next level if there were some stickers on these panels to make them look more like doors though. Oh well, it still looks good without them. The underside of the cars also have some details that represent some structural framing that you see underneath British train cars. The construction for this detail is simple yet effective and really impressed me when I built this set. You can actually pop one of the walls off as well as the roof to get access inside. I also love how the roof was made using those trapdoor frame pieces. These pieces are really cheap, and it's an insanely clever use of these pieces that help this set stay on budget. I would totally use this technique to build a train roof for my own models. I also noticed that this train has a light gray roof instead of black, like all the other LEGO Harry Potter trains. Is it accurate? I don't know, but it still looks good and makes this set stand out. I'm cool with this decision. Once you pop the roof off, you can see that there are some seats inside. It's pretty basic stuff. The second car has a space where you can hold the trolley witch. Why is she called a trolley witch? That seems kind of offensive. That's basically like calling her a trolley bitch. She doesn't sound very friendly, especially for someone who sells jelly beans and such. Lastly, let's talk about the station. At first, I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy the station that much, since I'm not a Harry Potter fan, but I did respect the look of the station. I love the various windows that are included, the fine brick details, and the roof looks good as well. It's also nicely decorated with all kinds of plant pieces and cool accessories like the light post and that brown fence piece. The size of the platform is also quite generous too. You can fit a lot of your Lego men on this platform. There are also two red buckets hanging outside. I wonder what they're used for though. My theory is that they contain grains to feed the horses, or perhaps they have water for putting out a fire. Maybe there's sand in there. If someone knows, please let me know down in the comments. The interior of this station really brings the wow factor though. The main lobby area has not one but two fireplaces, a desk with a really nice printed tile for a train ticket. I love that feather with the ink pot and a telephone as well. I love the dark orange color in here. It looks totally excellent. On the left side, there's a bathroom also known as a loo. It's built nicely with simple yet effective pieces, but what I really love is that the water inside the toilet is a translucent blue with sparkles in it. This implies that the toilet water in the universe of Harry Potter actually has magical properties. Like, if I were to dump my bowels in this bowl with Harry Potter by my side, the toilet would like cast a spell to make my stool disappear. I love that little detail. On the right side of the station is the Owl Post Office. It's got some nice details for such a small space. I especially love the printing on this owl. It's sick. Lastly, I just want to say that I like how there are chimneys that are above each of the fireplaces. It's attention to detail like this that really make this building feel real. I also like how the front window here kind of sticks out a bit and that the building isn't just a flat symmetrical building. There's some depth here. This set comes with eight minifigures. I'm not going to lie, I don't give a goddamn about any of these dudes. Except for perhaps the train conductor. He's cool, 
but there isn't much space for him to stand in the cab, so I can do without him. I'm actually considering selling all eight of these figures for like 30 bucks or so, so I can get more pocket money slash quid to buy more sets to review. I don't know though, I like to keep my Lego sets complete. All in all, this is a damn good Lego train set. It's actually got to be one of the best Lego train sets ever released. When you consider how many things come in the box. I love the proportions of the train. It's slightly smaller and more compact than other Harry Potter trains, but it's packed with details and the train feels much more complete since it has the second car. I personally love the size and scale of this train. It's perfect. The station track and trackside accessories are a bonus as well that make it feel like a complete package. This set is worth getting, especially if you can get it on sale. I will be making another video where I will show you how to motorize this train using just a few simple pieces. That's right, I figured out how to do it my dang self. As a final remark, please let me know in the comments which of these Harry Potter minifigures deserves to get beef stewed the most. Beef stew is when you pin someone down on the ground and fart in their face, often directly into their nostrils, as seen in the Rob Schneider movie, The Bench Warmers. So yeah, please tell me in the comments which minifigure deserves to get beef stewed by who. Alright guys, thanks for watching my review of this Lego set. See you in the next video.